Hello and welcome to the third in a three part series of basic kitchen drawer tutorials. In these tutorials I will guide you through the basic functionality of kitchen drawer. The third tutorial is devoted to the editing functions of kitchen drawer which are used to modify a scene. To put them into practice we will base this tutorial on the example one scene. Firstly open the example one scene by selecting open. Before carrying out any operation on a set of objects in the scene move, rotation, copy, etc. The object should be selected first. Select for example the table. To do that bring the mouse pointer over the rectangle symbolizing the table. Click on the left mouse button until the desired object is marked with small black squares and flickers. If several objects are on top of each other the first click will select the highest object. The next click will select the object just below. You can select an object the same way in elevation or in perspective view. To select several objects, press the shift key and hold it down. Bring the mouse pointer over one of the chairs. Click with the left mouse button until the desired object is selected. Continue and select the next chair. And finally, the place settings on the table. Please notice that the last selected object flickers, whereas the others are simply marked with a small black square. If you want no object to be selected, bring the mouse pointer outside of all the objects and click the left mouse button. To select all objects which are entirely located in a rectangle area of the scene, stretch a rectangle to cover the zone containing the objects to be selected. To do that, place the mouse pointer on one of the corners of the chosen area. Press on the left mouse button and hold it down. Move the mouse pointer to the opposite corner of the desired area and release the mouse to select the contained objects. Once you have selected a set of objects, there are various ways to move them. To carry out a move with the mouse, bring the mouse pointer over one of the selected objects, press on the left mouse button and keep it down. Drag the mouse pointer to the place where you wish to move the selected objects. It is also possible to rotate the silhouette by 45 degree steps. To do this, whilst holding the left mouse button and moving the object, press the right mouse button to rotate the objects by 45 degrees. Once you have located the desired position, simply release the left mouse button to place the objects. To move objects by a specific value in any given direction, choose Selection, Move, or select the Move icon on the taskbar. A small cross then appears beside the mouse pointer. Choose Selection, Move, or select the Move icon on the taskbar. Once you've selected the Move icon, a small cross appears next to the mouse cursor. To move the selected objects, simply left mouse click on one of the highlighted points and hold down. You can now drag an elastic line to another point within the scene to define the direction of movement. To move horizontally, let's drag this elastic line to a horizontal point. Once you have reached the desired point, release the left mouse button. You are now prompted to input a distance. I can now enter for example, 200. The objects will now move horizontally 200 millimeters. To rotate the selected objects 90 degrees, choose Selection, Rotate 90, or select the Rotate 90 degrees icon on the taskbar. To rotate the selected objects by a specific angle, choose Selection, Rotate, or select the Rotate icon on the taskbar. A round arrow then appears beside the mouse cursor. Place the mouse cursor on the point representing the rotation pivot. Press on the left mouse button and keep it down. Move the mouse pointer to another point in order to define the reference point for the rotation. Release the left mouse button. Move the mouse pointer in order to define the required angle. Click on the left mouse button when the silhouette of the selected objects appears to be correctly directed. The angle dialog box appears containing the value of the rotation angle. Modify the value of the angle if you wish to set a precise value. Click OK or press Enter to validate the rotation. Other operations can be carried out on the selected objects. To remove the selected objects, choose Edit, Delete, 
or press delete on your keyboard. To hide the selected objects, choose Selection Hide. To show the selected objects, choose Selection Show. To open the doors of selected objects, choose Selection Open. To close the doors of selected objects, choose Selection Close. To change the height of the window, let's go to Perspective View, then select the window. Select Object Attributes or select on the Attributes icon in the taskbar. The Attributes dialog then appears. If several objects are selected, it contains the attributes of the last object selected, i.e. the active object. Replace the height indicated in the H text area by the new value in millimeters. Click on OK or press the Enter key to validate the change. The attributes of an object depend on the type of object. Thus, the Attributes dialog box corresponding to a wall will be different from that corresponding to a piece of furniture or dimension. Here is the meaning of some attributes that require further explanation. Walls. The begin height of a wall is the height of the origin of the wall. The end height is the height of the opposite corner of the wall, i.e. for sloping walls. If I were to change this to 2 meters and select OK, I would then get a sloping wall. Cabinets. Description. This is a detailed description of the object which can be modified if the authorization has been given in the setup. Heading. Pricing table to which the object belongs. Marked. Specifies if the object must have a label with a number or reference. Build. If this box is checked, the object will not appear in the pricing table although it has a price. That makes it possible to use a billable object with a purely decorative aim. Details. Specifies if the graphic details of the object must be represented. For example, the legs for a cabinet. To be ordered. If this box is checked, the object will be present in the pricing table and in the estimate, but it will be absent of any purchase order to suppliers. To change the color of walls. The color of a wall in perspective is an attribute. Let's see how to modify the color of the active object and how to apply it to other objects. Select one of the walls of the scene. Choose Object Attributes or click on the Attributes icon on the taskbar. And click on the Modify button corresponding to the perspective color. The color dialog box now appears. Define the color you wish to use by adjusting the RGB values. Select OK to apply the changes. If you want to change the colour of several walls, simply make multiple selection of the walls that you want to change by left clicking the wall, holding shift and left clicking the next wall. Right click and select attributes, select modify next to the perspective colour, select your desired colour, select OK, then in the paste style drop down box select selection, then select OK. Here are some other operations that can be carried out on an active object. To include or not conclude some components associated with the active object, choose the object, then right click on components. The components dialog box enables you to set as present or absent the components that are associated with the active object. Check the boxes corresponding to the components you want to make present. Uncheck the components that you want to make absent. Click OK or press on Enter key to validate your choice. To change the finishes of an active object, select the object, then select Object Finishes. The Finishes dialog box enables you to choose the front model, as well as the colors and the type of handle. If the model's combo box is not grayed out, change the front models if you wish. You can now go through and select Finishes for this front model. If you wish to apply these new finishes to other objects in the scene, choose All in the Paste Finishes or choose to identical ones to apply these new finishes to objects of the scene belonging to the same family and have the same finishes as the active object. Or choose Selection to apply these new finishes to all the selected objects of the scene belonging to the same family as the active object. To see how the selling price of the active object is calculated, choose Object Price. The Price dialog box enables you to see the various steps of the active object selling price calculation and to apply special pricing conditions to it. To apply special conditions on the selling price of an active object, 
choose Object, Special Terms. The Special Terms dialog box enables you to apply special conditions to the selling price of an active object, as you can with the Price dialog box, but with more discretion with respect to the customer. That concludes part three of this three-part series on the basics of Kitchen Draw. Thank you very much for watching.